Okay, so in this lesson we're going to learn another uh, major bar chord pattern. Now in the previous lesson we learned how to make this pattern, which basically, if you remember, was the E, the same pattern you're making uh, with these three fingers as if you're playing an E chord in the open position. And what happens is your finger obviously becomes the new nut here. So that's the, the logic behind it. Now in this one we're going to create uh, a, a new pattern which looks and sounds like this. Again, it's all major, major chords, but it gives you, between the two, you have a whole bunch of variations as to how you can make different major chords up and down the neck. So, we haven't played, we haven't learned how to play the B chord yet, and that's intentional, uh, and we're going to learn it in this lesson. And the reason uh, I've held off is because the B chord, by the way, that's the only missing uh, major chord that we haven't covered. And the reason we haven't learned the B chord is because we need to know how to play this pattern before we can make the B chord. There's no other uh, easy way to do it. Um, so, the way that this works is you take your pointer finger and you push down across a bar just like we did in the previous lesson. Uh, but instead of using all three fingers this time to create the rest of the chord, we're only going to use one finger and we're going to bar three strings with one finger. So in addition to this bar, we're going to create another bar. Uh, and so that's this one's a little bit challenging, but it's, uh, it shouldn't be too bad. It won't be as hard as the F, I'll put it that way. So what you're going to do is, wherever you've barred, if you're here, here, it doesn't matter, but you're going to skip a fret, and then you're going to go to the next fret, and you're going to bar the fourth, third, and second strings. So in this case, if I'm, on the, if I'm barring with my pointer finger on the second fret, I'm going to go to the 4th fret and I'm going to bar with, and I use my pinky for this, but I bar the 4th, 3rd, and 2nd string. And they should all ring out like that. And then, uh, and then this, obviously this finger is covering the lower notes, so all together kind of sounds like that. Now with this chord, you're only playing the middle 4 strings. You're not playing all six. And one, one nice thing uh, is you can actually, technically, you can get away with if you're, you know, strumming something fast and you hit that bottom uh, sixth string, it's okay. Um, so you know, it, it'll it'll fit into the chord. Um, but to to kind of properly make a chord in this position, uh, you play the middle four. Now, two things to point out. Uh, one. I'm technically playing this, uh, I think I'm playing it wrong by using my pinky here. I think most people when they make this pattern, they use their ring finger. So I'm only showing you the way that I do it because it's comfortable for me. But when you're trying this, you may want to try starting with your ring finger to make, to make this bar uh, on this fret. Because that kind of makes sense. You've got a finger kind of lined up over every fret. and most uh, most guitar players that I watch when they're making this uh, pattern, they're kind of making it like this. But for whatever reason, that doesn't work with my hand. Um, and I'm not sure why. I think just early on, when I was um, learning to play, I thought that you made it this way. And I've just gotten comfortable over the years. And, you know, so it doesn't matter. As long as you can, you can borrow them, it doesn't really matter. There's no sort of right, an right or wrong answer on that. But... Uh, like I said, you may want to try starting with your ring finger, and if, if that works for you, great. That's how most people do it. But, um, you know, some people do use their pinky. Um, this is kind of weird. It kind of looks weird because you got two fingers that are just kind of floating out there doing nothing. But anyway, that's how, that's how it works. Um, and that's that second, um, that second pattern. Now, another thing to point out is, and some people can do this, I can't do this, but basically they arch their finger in a way so that they can actually play um, this uh, this high E string it'll it, or you know it won't, won't won't be an E note but the high the high string the first string um, and it'll technically work if you're barring this so if I you know kind of cram uh, you can see um, that that string would work now it doesn't make sense to to kind of cram all three fingers the only reason I'm doing that is because I cannot arch my finger in a way that it, it releases to let this string ring out. Uh, some people uh, can do that, but I've, I've tried it for years and I've never been able to do it. So 
Uh, so I just stick to playing the middle four. And I've played in uh, lots of uh, different bands and different um, settings through the years, and that's always worked just fine for me. Um, now I've never really, it's never slowed me down. So, um, another thing to point out is what you're doing so that you get kind of the logic behind this. You remember in the, the previous lesson, the, the, the pattern that we made was uh, basically it was an E chord, the, the same fingerings we use as an E chord with a bar thrown in. This is the same as what we do when we make the A chord in open position. Remember the A chord we crammed? That was the one where we crammed all three fingers on the second fret. Well, think of it this way, or look at it this way. If I were to play those um, with, with my pinky here creating the bar, and obviously I don't have to push down anything here because the nut's doing that for me, but you can see what happens if I go to an A sharp. up the neck and and so that's what's happening so the first pattern was basically the E pattern the second pattern is basically that A pattern and bet between those two patterns you have a whole uh, uh, a whole bunch of different very vari variables to work with in terms of making chords up and down the neck so now you can make a G chord here you can make a G chord here, and you can make a G chord here, and you can see what I just did when I went high like that. That's that. Um, it looks kind of weird, but uh, that's that. That second pattern that we just learned, playing just the four, middle four. And so you know you can play a D chord here now. You can play a D chord here. You can play a D chord way up here. You can play a C here, you can play a C here, you can play a C up here. So it gives you, uh, it gives you options now. So when you're strumming around, you, you got different places. You're not just limited to just strumming down here. And so hopefully those two um, analogies, you can see how those bar chords are, how those patterns are derived. They're derived from chords that we've already learned in the open position. We're just basically simulating the nut. And so that's how we, we create those chords. And you're going to see that when we do the uh, seventh chord and the minor chords, it's the same concept. So, you know, we, we play the A minor here. Well, we do the same, you know, and we're going to learn that in the next lesson. But you can get uh, the same kind of uh, principle applies in, in terms of how you create those chords. So... Uh, hopefully that makes sense to you um, as to uh, how you how these both of these patterns work. Keep practicing them. Keep trying to make the chords at different positions now that you've got two uh, different patterns to play with. So you've got this pattern and this pattern. And just try jumping back and forth between them. Now it's not going to come that quickly in the beginning, obviously, but if you keep working with it, get it. So hopefully that's fun for you.